Hello friends, welcome to Crack Gate CSE. And in this playlist of computer organization, today we will be understanding how you can find out the range of floating point data, whether it is a 32 bit format, 64 bit format, or any hypothetical format. So, whatever the procedure I am explaining over here will be useful for finding out the range of any data format, right? So, you just need to follow these particular procedure that I am explaining over here, and you can fi easily find out the range for any uh, data format right so i will be considering 32 bit format for the explanation but using the same procedure you can find out for 64 bit or any hypothetical data right so uh, one more thing that if you have not checked my previous videos on floating point data format so uh, in the previous videos we have discussed that how we can represent the floating point data what are the different data formats available and what are the different terminologies that we use while representing the floating point data so if you have not subscribed the channel till now please subscribe the channel and make sure you press the bell icon so that you can get an update whenever i am uploading any new videos now let's quickly start with the topic which is range of floating point data so first thing that you need to understand is that the uh, range of the floating point data entirely depends on the format what we are using so whether we are using the 30 bit 32 bit format or we are using the 64 bit format so the range for 32 bit format will be definitely less than that of 64 bit format so that's why it entirely depends on the format here for the explanation i am considering 32 bit format for the analysis but yes the procedure is same for all kind of data format so we know that in 32 bit format one bit is reserved for sign 8 bits are reserved for biased exponent and 23 bits are reserved for mantissa right mantissa which is nothing but the fraction part so we already know that the sign can be either 0 or 1 that means either positive or negative so this particular bit will not be uh, considered as a range it will be uh, showing whether the particular values lies on the negative side or on the positive side right and in the exponent so why exponent is important because we need to find out the actual uh, actual exponent values so how we can find out see we know that this biased exponent this particular bits will be used to find out the actual exponent what is the formula uh, biased exponent is equals to actual exponent plus bias bias can be calculated by putting this 8 over here at the place of n so it will be 127 now we will be checking for two extreme condition one is minimum another one is maximum so first of all i am considering the minimum value so what can be the minimum value of this biased exponent that is all zeros that means eight zeros eight zeros is equals to zero and what can be the maximum value that means all ones all ones means eight ones eight ones is equals to 255 right so now let's try to find out the actual exponent for the minimum biased exponent actual exponent is equals to be minus bias right so be is 0 in minimum case minus this is 127 so the actual exponent is minus 127 for the minimum biased exponent and similarly if you if you want to find out for the maximum biased exponent ae is equal to be minus bias so be is 255 and bias value is 127 so it will be 128 so we got to know that the range for the exponent will vary from minus 127 to 128 so some task is done now we have to move on to the mantissa part now we have to find out the range for the mantissa right so I, we know that uh, in a normalized way there is a leading one then after there is a mantissa that is a fraction part, part right so for mantis also there can be two cases one is minimum value and other one is maximum value in minimum value there can be all zeros that means 23 zeros and the value of 23 zeros will be equals to zero right so we can write it as 1.m where m is nothing but zero so it is equals to one this is for the minimum mantissa case what if you are considering maximum mantissa case in maximum mantissa case there would be 23 ones so if we are having 23 ones then we have to normalize it normalize it because we by default have a leading one leading one followed by these 23 ones now we have to align 23 times to shift all these value to the right hand side so that we can convert it into the integer value right so we are shifting all the values to the left hand side then there will be 24 ones 
on the left hand side and the on the uh, right hand side there will be zero so no need to write that and if we are aligning 23 times that means 2 is to the power minus 23 is to be multiplied the value the decimal value for for these 23 ones will be equal to sorry these 24 ones because including this one also so these 24 ones will be equal to 2 is to power 24 minus 1 right so if we have if we are having three ones how we can find out the value 2 is to power 3 minus 1 that means 8 minus 1 is equal to 7 similarly we can find out the value for this so 2 is to power 24 minus 1 into this one now we have to multiply this inside so it will be 2 minus 2 is power minus 23 so we got to know that the range of the mantissa will vary from 1 to 2 minus 2 is power minus 23 so here we got the range of mantissa of exponent now we have to check uh, what will be the variation in the range so first of all i am considering the positive value that means zero so let the sign is zero and if the sign is zero we know that when we have normalized this right what will be the minimum value one right so zero means positive so i'm just directly writing positive here positive and this is one so this is normalized to one and what will be the actual exponent actual exponent can be 127 in the minimum case right so here let so here we are talking about the positive value 2 again what can be the maximum value all ones here also so first of all we need to write out the mantissa part which is equals to 2 minus 2 to the power minus 23 now we have to write out the exponent so 2 to the power what is the maximum possible value of exponent 128 so for the positive side will be having the value 1 into 2 to the power minus 127 to this similarly we can find out for the negative as well so if it is 1 then it is negative again it will it will be varying for the same kind that means minus so what will be the minimum in this case only so 1 into 2 to the power minus 127 so minus 2 is to the power minus 127 because we are talking about the negative values when it is 1 and it will vary to 2 to the power 2 minus 2 to the power 23 into 2 to the power 128 because the maximum possible exponent is this so this will be in negative so we got the range so this will be in the positive case this will be in the negative case now what we have to do is we will be trying to plot these particular values in a particular figure so that we can clearly understand what is going on inside right so now just let me quickly change this paper now here you can see one thing is here i just made a table for the better understanding so the normalized value so these are the normalized value that i discussed with you in single precision it will be varying from plus minus that is plus minus 2 to the power minus 127 sorry this will be 127 right so minus 127 to 2 minus 2 to the power minus 23 2 to the power 128 right so this will be the value which varies in normalized case in denormalized case the value will varies like this so i'm not explaining about the denormalized way because it is not very important as far as gate is concerned similarly you can find out the values or the range for the double precision and the approximate decimal value is given as this so i just uh, represented the values over here so that you can have an idea that how uh, what are the exact values in terms of decimal also in terms of denormalized also in terms of normalized also so just have a look at this and try to revise it once and you will be getting uh, what is the value they will not uh, these values will not be asked in gate the questions which can be asked in gate i'll be discussing those questions as well right so you need not to worry about anything else now the range can be split into normalized like this one denormalized like this one which uses only some part of fraction precision what does it mean that it does not completely utilizes the range it utilizes some part of the fractions so there are some ranges that single precision format is unable to represent so there are some ranges that are unable to be represented using the single precision format so here you can see that i plotted all the values that we have funded out so just let me put it over here so these values we have calculated in the previous page and i'm just putting these values over here so this is 
plus 2 to the power 127 which is this this value is this and negative value 2 to the power minus 127 is this and this value is this right so i'm just showing it so that you can clearly understand what is going on now the value which is less than plus 2 to the power minus 127 is known as positive underflow and if the value is exceeding this particular value it is known as positive overflow if the value is less than this minus 2 to the power minus 127 then it is known as negative underflow and similarly if the value exceeds this condition it is known as negative overflow right so whenever the value is near to zero it is considered as underflow and whenever it is exceeding the condition it is uh, it can be understand as positive overflow right and this is positive data and this is negative data now one thing you should notice over here is that exponent overflow so this exponent overflow occurs when exponent exceeds maximum possible positive condition so if possible condition is exceeded that means the exponent overflow will be somewhere here right and this exponent underflow occurs when exponent exceeds maximum possible negative exponent that means this particular value will be somewhere here right because underflow occurs here to handle these kind of questions we are having some special values right so these special values will be discussed in the next video but here i need to discuss one important thing there is some rounding techniques which are used to report the result after the computation so first rounding technique is round to zero first rounding technique is round to so you can write it down if you want so these are the rounding techniques first one is round to zero so this round to zero means nearby the zero value it represents the underflow condition so whenever in question it is written that round to zero that means there is a underflow right second is round to infinite right so this infinite can be plus also negative also right so this round to infinite represents the overflow conditions like this one positive overflow negative overflow so if it is plus infinite it will be positive overflow is will if it is negative infinite it will be negative underflow so this round to infinite represents the overflow condition and the third thing is round to nearest and this round to nearest is used to represent the fractions right so i hope you got an idea about these three things in the next video i will be coming up with a uh, with some question with one question on this rounding techniques and one question on this spatial values and in the next video i will be also explaining you what are the spatial values and how you can identify that what spatial values is given right so i hope you got an idea what exactly is going on in this particular lecture so if you found this particular visual video useful do not forget to like the video and share it with your friends and in case if you are having any suggestion please feel free to share with me in comments right so thank you very much for your valuable time keep supporting keep learning have a great day